So uh, I am with the guy who, as I said to Jim Monahan, who does the WDHA Morning Jolt this morning, I said to him, what can't Mark Tremonti do? And we were having this conversation about you as we were listening to Christmas classics, new and old, your Christmas album, your holiday album. I just, you know, I'm a big mouth. And sometimes I get a little speechless around you because I feel like there are just talents that are opening up like windows of a computer. Oh, well, thank you so much. You know, that Christmas record was about the most fun I've ever had in the studio. And I, I'm just lucky enough to be able to do that and have my fans not tell me to, <laughs> to get back to the rock and roll thing. Let me ask you, because first of all, who gets the idea? Is it you? Is it a manager? Is it the wife? Is it your band? You know, the artists that you've been working with? Who gets the idea that, you know what, I think would be great for Mark to do some holiday tunes? It was the, uh, it was the fans of the Tremonti Sing Sinatra record. You know, when I saw people react to that and say, well, it sounds like you, you should do a Christmas album. Because a lot of people, just like myself, were introduced to that kind of music through Christmas songs uh, to begin with. So I got into singing like that by singing Christmas songs. So I was like, you know what? Yes, I do need to do a Christmas record. Thank, thank the fans for suggesting it. Yeah. And Christmas songs and music and the DHA listeners know this about me too. Very strange with me because I'm less of the quirky liker and more of the traditionalist, yes, uh, more of too. the Nat King Cole, more of the Karen Carpenter. Like I, that's what the spirit of the holiday is for me. I feel those songs. So when you put this out and I started listening, I was like, ah, oh, yes, <laughs> this Easy. is what I like. And 10 songs, mm -hmm. 10 great classics. And you have your own Christmas song now. Yeah. You know, it was something that my, my father had said for years. He's like, you know, Mark, you got to write a Christmas song. That'll be a legacy piece that will way outlive you. And I'm like, dad, I, I, I'm in a rock and roll band. Nobody would ever accept it. It would be cheesy to do. Um, and then when I did the Sinatra record, I was like, that's the perfect opportunity to open that door to do the record because I'll do it in a traditional way and uh, try to record something that sounds like it was, um, you know, I tried to write a song that sounds like it was written back in the 40s or 50s. And that was that was my main goal. Yeah. Christmas morning. And it it does. That's the hard part about it, because a great Christmas song. How do you do that? How do you get inspired to do that? Do you do you do it from being around the band? Because you've got to have a little bit of everything. It, it has to be a little whimsical. It has to be a little magical. There has to be some meaning to it, but it can't be a downer like and you just captured this. You nailed it. And not only did you nail the song, but the video, the companion piece, because it's not just a video, it's like a companion piece, yeah. is perfection. So talk to me about putting those two together. Yeah, so I wanted to, like I said, write a song that sounded like it was written, uh, sounded like one of the songs we'd hear when we were, we were kids. And my favorite movies in the holidays were uh, The Year Without a Santa Claus was number one for me. You know, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and Frosty and all the, all the claymation movies were my favorite. So I wanted to do a video that... Um, that was similar to that. So we found this, 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 my manager, Tim found this director who actually, who actually had done a video for seven dust. Uh, so he had oh, also yeah, done. That, that, right. I was going to ask you that because obviously they're so similar in nature, but uh, very different in the, you know, in the concept for the video. Yep. Yeah. So we used the same director and um, you know, as far as coming up with the, the song itself, I was, when I was practicing singing Sinatra, before I even was going to do the, the, the record, I was just like, you know what, let me see if I could write one of these songs. It would be, it would be a huge challenge to be able to tackle it. So I was just singing a cappella, singing melodies in the style of Frank Sinatra and the melody came out for the song. And, um, the lyrics for a Christmas song came out with it. And this was in the middle of the summer for some, you know, some reason. And, uh, I was like, all right, I'm going to one day write this, put this song out. But who knows if I'll ever have the chance to do it, because this was before the Tremonti Sing Sinatra record came out. And I had no idea if I'd ever be able to put it out, because I'm not going to put it out with Creed or Alter Bridge or Tremonti. It just wouldn't fit. So finally got the opportunity to do it. And, um, you know, one of the most exciting things was being able to, to sing with a choir and the strings and the orchestra. It was uh that's the way that song needed to be. It's not a, it's not an acoustic or piano kind of song. Yeah. And it's so perfect. It's just enough of everything. And I love 
the video and I love your family at the end of the video. It's just so awesome. You know, you're, I don't want to give too much away. I'm going to post the video right under the interview, but um, you know, and you, you've got the list. I saw Timmy T's name um, on, T. The, on the, on no, the, on the list. I'm watching the video. And I'm like, wait, did that, does that say Tim Turnier? That's your manager. And I'm like, oh, Tim yeah. made the, Tim made the claymation video on the list. I picked that out right, right there. I think it was at the naughty list or the nice list. I can't remember, but uh, yeah, he made, he made the list and uh, no, that director killed it. Uh, you know, I, and the funny thing is the, the video, the final video got to me the day before it was supposed to be released. So if I didn't like anything, there was no turning back. Um, but I remember we were partying one night and we watched the video and I was, we were laughing so hard. We were crying because of just how funny my wife looks in the video. Yeah. Now when she, now, when she calls me, that's what that's what I see when she she's calls out there me. in her robe. That's okay. So and and I love little Stella, you know, oh, at yeah. the end of the video with her little pigtails and her doll. It's just it's just epic and so cool and everything that a Christmas song should be. Now, I want to talk about the uh, Basie show. You are coming to the Count Basie Center for the Arts in Red Bank, New Jersey on the 6th of January. That's going to be something to look for post holidays. So talk to me about. um you know, coming back and doing that and also about, um, you know, working with people that are arranging this incredible music, whether it's your Tremonti sing Sinatra stuff or, you know, your band leaders or your holiday stuff. You know, you're working with a whole bunch of different cats that are, you know, different than anything you've ever done before. Yeah, no, it's great. And it's very different, very, very different than the rock and roll world. In the rock and roll world, we would set up for weeks of rehearsals for something like this. Um, I have a show in two weeks. It's the, it'll be the biggest show we've done at the Walt Disney Theater here in, in Orlando at the Performing Arts Center. And it's um, I get in there with 50 plus musicians and we go through the songs one time before we perform it. And it's all going to be recorded on. We're going to film it all. So I want you know, in, a, in the big picture, I'd like to film it and, and release it for charity, you know, put the uh, the performance out there for charity. And, uh, you know, so it's yeah, it's not like rock. There's no you get you get thrown to the wolves. Um, these guys get music put in front of them and they do it exactly the, the way it's shown. And then we have one or two guys, either Mike Smith or Carrie Deadman will conduct out front to keep the tempos and uh dynamics straight and you know those guys are geniuses you know to be able to control 50 people on stage and have them all in sync with you um and it's not you're not just going to a constant beat you're you're ebbing and flowing with these songs and there's a lot of uh a lot of moving parts and these guys you know they did it with frank sinatra they can do two it legends with- Abso- yeah. absolutely two legends so how has your relationship how's your personal relationship with these guys grown because you know when Tremonti sings Sinatra is that two years ago that a little over two years ago that that started about, maybe maybe about two years but no our relationship is great you know these guys are are awesome to work with and like I said they've they've all you know said they're they're so appreciative that they're able to get back together with some of these guys they haven't played with in so long and uh you know a lot of the guys are still um guys working around the clock like Carrie Deadman is you know, it's hard to get Carrie on the phone. He's so busy all the time. I'll call him up and say, let's, you know, I just called him the other day. I'm like, let's get Carol the bells going. So you guys can play that without me. Cause when we do the show, it's going to be Sinatra. And then there's going to be Carol, the bells leading into Christmas. Um, So I want them to do that instrumental with the, with the, well, not instrumental. It'll be instrumental with the choir without me. Um, But I need to work out the arrangement with them. Um, but he's so busy, it's hard to get these things these things done last minute. But when we do play New Jersey, that's just going to be, I would think, just straight Sinatra. I don't think we should do Christmas after Christmas. It might it might get weird. I would love to keep doing a Christmas thing, but um, that's the toughest thing about a Christmas album. You can't promote it before Thanksgiving, and you can't promote it after. Right, 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 right. By the way, um, and by the way, for um. For the Basie show, guess who's going to have tickets to give away for that, um, you know, when this runs? Me, me, me. So I want everybody to listen and we'll uh, we'll hook you up with some tickets. So, OK, so then you shift out of out of Tremonti Singh Sinatra. And uh, it's just crazy because now you've got the Creed Cruise and then the Creed Tour. I was thinking, though, when the Creed Cruise came out, you know, when you're on a boat 
there ain't no getting off. Yeah. So that was, that's very adventurous to do, you know, getting back with the band and everything you're doing, you're doing the cruise. So did you always know that, you know, look, we're going to get together and we're going to do something for the fans after the cruise, or did you kind of want to see how the cruise, the fans reaction to the cruise was before you committed to a tour? No, we knew we were going to do a tour. We just didn't know how big of a tour it was going to be. Yeah. Um, we kind of wanted to use that to gauge the, the amount of, uh, how receptive people were going to be. And when we put that, that cruise on sale, um, the six man group who put the, put the cruise together, I think they said they've been in business for 21 years and this was the quickest selling uh, cruise that they had insane. ever. Insane. That was nuts that day. Crazy. And, and it's funny, you know, in, in my household, my wife and kids watch, you know, I, I'll get there and watch with them too. the, uh, the Hallmark channel movies, the Christmas mm -hmm. movies. They said that the only other cruise that had sold as fast at a certain point uh, was the Hallmark cruise. <laughs> I didn't even know uh, they did a cruise. That's wild. It, oh, that's you know, insane. What, they probably reenact the movies, but. Uh, oh, my gosh. You know, yeah, popular cruise, I guess. Yeah. Well, you can't get on the cruise, but of course, and I think there's still some tickets available, but there's not many. Most of the dates, a, a good portion um, for the Creed Summer of 99 tour are sold out. We have a PNC date on Wednesday, August 7th with Three Doors and Finger 11, but these tickets are going very quickly. So I always say check back, don't get pissed off if you know, you said they were available because these things change like that, but there's not that many. And you had to be jazzed about how well the tour, when the tour went on sale too, it was like, bam, 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 like just selling so well. It's crazy, I think, sometimes when you put you know, things on sale in October for the following August and, but people are buying them like nuts. Yeah. You know, and we appreciate it because ever since, you know, ever since we, you know, Creed broke up for the first time, we took that, that break. Um, you realize how well we had it, you know, as far as the radio play and the ticket sales and all that stuff. And then when we started Alter Bridge and we realized how, how much of, of, of work it took to get back up to that level, at least over in, uh, at least over in, in Europe, um, and especially with Tremonti, I, I wish I could sell a tenth of the tickets Creed sells with with Tremonti Band. And you know, we that's why we appreciate how well Creed has done because it gives us that, you know, we get to relive that those 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 years that we first got excited about being professional musicians. And uh, you know, like I said, the pre-sale went on and it did really well, but when the general on sale went on, we were blown away. So, um, you know, we we hope for the best. It's going to be an exciting summer, and then I'm sure. There's going to be something Tremonti wise after that. I'm going to, yeah. I mean, after I, after I finish these Sinatra shows in January, I hit the studio with Tremonti in February. Um, you know, I don't think a lot of people know on the outside looking in, you can't just record a record, then put it out the next week. You know, we, we go in the studio in February and the record won't come out until probably a year later or, or 10 months later. So we'll do all the Creed tours. Uh, and then uh, following that, we'll, we'll do some Tremonti touring right up until Alter Bridge hits the studio. So we just got to make sure the most important thing for, for me and me, Brian and Scott Phillips is to make sure that uh, Alter Bridge is on track and we come out with a record every three years, um, you know, cause it, it's uh, Creed has now been reintroduced into the circle here. We need to make sure that, that uh, nothing suffers and we get, we just got to work a little, a little quicker. And you know, you come to Jersey, Alter Bridge shows sell out like that. They are always a sellout in this great state of New Jersey. We love, love, love you. Last year at this time, I think we were getting ready for the Wellmont show, which was on February 1st. And uh, that was sold out months in advance. And, um, you know, people love you. The cookie people have to get you the cookies. You know, yeah. this, it's a whole oh. Jersey everything here, you know. Brownies, cookies, yeah. Well, I hope, yeah. I hope that. That spills over to the uh, the Sinatra shows because that's uh, I really want to build that up. That's like I said, that's a lot of fun, and all the shows are for charity. So everybody who buys a ticket to that show just know it's going to a good cause. It's going to the National Down Syndrome Society, and uh, the best, the absolute best, the impact that you've made, and the awareness that you brought is just so incredible. And I think little Stella is such a light for everybody. I mean, I follow her on Instagram. I want to see what she's doing and where she's going and what's happening with her. And she's amazing. She's always look at her. Always, my, she's my entire, unbelievable. My entire studio is full of Stella pictures, but yeah, she's made a lot of, of change. And, you know, we just opened up the uh, smile with Stella um, Tremonti down syndrome clinic in Orlando. I saw that. 
Uh, that's that's my proudest achievement. You know, it's the first of its kind in the southeast. It's a it's a lifelong it's a lifespan clinic where when when kids you know turn eighteen years old, they don't have to find another doctor. It's a place uh, people can stay and feel comfortable. And uh, you know, we've already seen a ton of people, um, an influx of people come into the clinic, and you know, the the community around here is so excited about it. It's it's just a best thing that's that's ever happened to us. It's so amazing, and to be there for families. To say, like, you are always going to have a place to go. I don't know how many things people can say that about. So when I saw that, I mean, it just, it blew my mind. I mean, just absolutely incredible, incredible work that's just living on and living on and living on. When you hear from families, parents, sisters, brothers, grandparents, um, about the impact that you've made, what is it like? It has to be incredible. It's it's beyond incredible, and these and these folks aren't just calling up and saying, "Hey, we, we enjoy going to the, the clinic." They're saying, "How can we help? How can we raise funds? How can we make this bigger and better?" Because we we just opened the doors. You know, we're just starting out. Um, we have three, you know, three doctors and and a, a ton of, of of nurse practitioners. But but uh, we want to make it. I want in my big picture um, idea is to have a partnership with Disney and give kids the world and have people travel from around the globe to get their annual checkups. Um, to have free tickets to Disney and free housing at Disney and give kids the world and, uh, you know, have these families look forward to actually going to get their physicals and to get their their medical checkups because they get to go on these vacations because Orlando is the absolute perfect spot to do it. Uh, and Advent Health, who we've partnered with for the clinic, they already have a, a relationship with Disney and their entire foyer is all Disney and they play all the new Disney movies in the in the foyer and um, it's just a beautiful group of people. And, um, like I said, we just, we just opened the doors, but it's, uh, the sky's the limit hopefully. And hopefully these shows will keep on raising money and, and, uh, not, not just the, I think the big thing is to, I want people to hear about the clinic and, and feel charitable. I'm talking like, I want a big, you know, it'd be great to meet some billionaire somewhere. That's like, you know what, this cause is great. I'm going to champion it. That's what we really need to get it to the next level. That was really always your goal when you sort of challenged people to kind of get involved with charity. That was yeah. always your goal to be able to open up that dialogue and have people be inspired to do more, to do more than they were doing before. And I think that that's the reason that everything has come together and worked so well for you. Yeah. You know, and I think, you know, when I've asked people to do this project, um, I, I like to, to show them the cause and effect of what, what can happen if they do it, you know, um, say, you know, we did this project last year or a year and two years ago we raised over a million dollars in its first year and it's still um earning and we got to open up a clinic in our daughter's name which is just the, the like i said of all the things i've ever done in life that's by far uh the most proud moment and uh i'd like to I get, i'd like to get other artists to do the same yeah mark i love you i'm always happy to see you whenever i know well, i have to talk to you I'm always like, oh, this is great. It's going to be a great afternoon. And I'm happy I got to see you before the holidays so I can wish you a Merry Christmas. And I'll see you on the 6th of January at the Basie uh, Tremonti Sing Sinatra. I'm so excited. Me and Jim Monahan certainly will be in the audience for that one. And look, the Christmas album is incredible. Um, sure. I'm going to play uh, your song, Um Christmas morning after this interview and I'm going to put, put the videos underneath, but it's just, it's a beautiful, beautiful piece of music. It's something everybody needs to have on their holiday listen to list. And um, again, what can't you do? Yeah. I know I will be talking to you soon. You will be dazzling of, me with something else. I know it. Many things. I can't play basketball. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of things I can't do. Mark, <laughs> thank you so much. I love you. Mwah. Thank you. Love you. So thank you so much. DHA's Reconnect with Rockers is powered by Dover Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram on Route 46 in Rockaway.